Hello, good evening. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you back to our class. Today, we are looking at Math Form 3, lesson number 2, a topic known as Formula and Variations. Subtopic is Partial Variations. We are looking at example 2. This is a continuation of uh, lesson number 1. That's why I've gone direct to example 2. Remember, we said that under partial variations, there are two statements that students should understand. One being uh, partly constant and partly fire is us. That's the first statement which we looked at in our first example. Today we are looking at the second statement that students should understand under partial variations. And that is, part is partly, and partly, part is us. When, you, when a student finds this kind of a statement, saying a certain quantity, part is partly us, and partly us, dash, dash. So how do students need to understand that statement? So it means that when you get this kind of a statement saying that there is a quantity firing partly us and partly us. So that means we are going to form an equation having two constants. And the constants, both of the constants are going to have the variables. So I'm going to cut out this particular example, which I know it will enable you to understand how we can deal with partial operations. When we have the two statements, I've already said that uh, in our first example, I tried to show you on how to handle that kind of a statement saying partly constant and partly far is us. And remember we said that when you get that kind of a statement, you are obtaining an equation in the form y is equals to mx plus c. So today, we are having an example here which is saying t and s are variables such that t varies partly as s and partly as the square root of s. When t is equals to 204, s is 36. And when t is equals to 145, s is equals to 25. Find the relationship between T and S. So as we are going to tackle this, kindly go down there, subscribe, and share. Like if, if you want. Put your comment down there. So that's the kind of support that I request from you. And so far, so good. I want to thank you for your support. You are amazing people. God bless you. So... Let's start by uh, going step by step. T and S are the two variables. T varies partly as S. So that statement will be written as T is equals to S. Because we are talking about partly constant and uh, partly constant, uh, I mean partly as S. So that means this S will have a constant. So you think of any letter which will be our constant in this case. We can even think of uh, x. So you, you will see me saying t is equals to s, which is now a variable, times a constant x. Then plus and partly as the square root of s. So I will write the square root of s, then I will multiply by a constant. I can Think of uh, another letter, uh, which can be M. So in this case, T, S are the variables. X, M are constants. Remember I said that if you get a statement saying that a certain uh, variable is partly, is partly, I mean is firing partly as, and partly as, so you will obtain an equation having two constants. So I'm asking you, will you be able to see the two constants in this particular statement that I've uh, written here? Yes. X and M are constants. 
Remember, T and S are variables. Because this is the point where uh, students get some difficulties in coming up with this kind of uh, an equation, I want to repeat slowly so that the learners can understand the concept. We are talking about T varying partly as S. So I started by saying T is equal to S times a constant. So you must think of a constant. That's why I, I, I put X in. Then plus, and is a plus, you present a plus there, partly as the square root. At first I said the square root of S according to the way they have uh, given us. The statement here is square root of S. So I decided to start by saying square root of S times a certain constant, which I took M to stand for. So you can be able to see M here, you can be able to see X as the constants. Because I started by saying, when you see this kind of a statement, part is part three, and part three as, that gives you that the mathematical equation which we will obtain is going to have two constants. Not like the, in, in, in the previous example, where we were told that a certain uh, variable is part three constant and part three variable is us. Part three constant, you only think of a constant which has no variable. So that's why you obtain, in that case, that's why you obtain the equation in the form y is equal to m x plus c. But here there's a, a, a difference. Where is the difference? We have two constants, and every constant is having a variable. Now we can say t is equal to s times x is sx plus m times square root of s. I can even say m then square root of what? s. So this is the mathematical expression for the statement given here. Now that we have been told that t is 404, when s is that 6, we can now replace t and s using the values given here. So t is 204 is equals to s is that 6, that 6x plus m is a constant, then the square root of what? That 6. I'm replacing s with that 6, t with 204. This factor can be simplified as 204 is equals to that 6x plus the square root of that 6 is 6. So m times 6 gives us uh, 6m. So this will appear to be your first equation. This is the Arena equation. Now let's go to the second, to the other statement where we have been given t as 145 when s is 25. So you will see me uh, coming down here and saying, uh, given that t is equal to s x plus m square root of s, now t is 145, 145, then s is 25, 25 x, then plus m square root of s, which is now 25. We can simplify that to p 25 x Square root of 25 is 5. 5 times m will give you 5m. This will be our second equation. So we have two equations here. We can use either substitution method or elimination method to solve for x and m. So you will see me bringing this first equation to the other side so that we have 204 is equals to that 6x plus 6 m. Using uh, elimination, the easiest way is to interchange the coefficients of m. Here the coefficient of m is 5. You bring 5 down here. Here the coefficient of m is 6. You, you take it up. So that when you multiply this particular equation by 6, we will obtain 
145 times 6 will be 145 times 6 will be 870. Then we have 25 times 6, which is 150 x. Uh, then this will be that m. 5 times 204. That m is giving me uh, 1020. 5 times that 6. That 6 times 5 is 108x plus 6 times 5 is that m. Now that the coefficients of m are equal, we can eliminate m by subtracting. Remember, we only subtract if the signs here are equivalent. If they are different, you add. Now that they are the same, we will subtract. Therefore, this will give us 0. This will give us minus 30. 870 minus, 100, uh, minus 1020, it gives me minus 150. Then you divide by minus 30, you divide by minus 30. Remember there was x here, I'm sorry I forgot. Now this and this one will cancel, so our x will be, that comes here 1, that goes there, uh, 5 times. Remember the, the, the minus here we cancel with the upper minus, therefore our power of x becomes uh, 5. So we can go back to any particular equation and use 5 instead of x. So for us to be able to obtain the power of m. So if we go back there, we will now say 145 is equal to 25 times x, as you can be able to see, then plus 5 m but x is 5 i will now say 145 is equals to 25 times 5 plus 5 m this is 145 is equals to this gives us 125 n plus 5 m we take this one to the other side it will become it is positive now it will become a minus is equals to uh, 5 M. 145 minus 125 gives you 20 is equals to 5 M. You divide by 5, you divide by 5. 5 and 5 will cancel. So our M becomes 4 because 5 goes to 5 once, 5 goes to 20 four times. So we have found the values of X and M. But the question wanted us to find the relationship between T and S. So I will come back here because of space. Remember, this is the mathematical expression that was connecting T and S. So we will now say T is equals to where does X? We will now use 5. So you will now see me saying 5 times s becomes 5s. Then plus I have I have m. I have m, but in this case m is 4. So I have to put 4 there. Then the square root of s. So once you place the constants with their values, remember the constants were x and m. Now that we found their values, their real values, you, you come back to this uh, mathematical expression connecting t and s, because the t and s were our variables. You now replace the constants which you came up with with their real values. So once you are done, with that, that becomes the equation connecting T and S. So now this is the relationship between the two variables. So that's how it is being done. If you have any question, kindly go down there to our comments. Make your comments there. I'm going to answer you accordingly. Thank you for your support. God bless you so dear for me. See you next time. Bye-bye.